Hi, I'm Miss Carolyn from Cosmopro and today I'm going to be doing a video on tubes. We are the pioneers of IPRF smart cell in the UK and we are specialists in this field of regenerative medicine. We are a science-led company and it's evident that a lot of people, a lot of practitioners have been misinformed on what tubes to use when they're offering PRP. So this video is hopefully to help people understand why you shouldn't be using these tubes and what tubes you should be using. I'm going to start with the green one. Now the green one is a heparin tube. Heparin is the anticoagulant within the tube. On the label, it will actually say IVD on it. So all four of these are BD tubes. That's the brand of tube. There's different brands out there. I think the most common that people are using is BD. And if you're buying off eBay and Amazon, then you really shouldn't be. So IVD stands for in vitro diagnostics. That means lab testing. IVD tubes are not licensed and they're not biocompatible and they're not tested for reinjection. So any autologous treatments, you should not be using an IVD tube the green one. This is the most common one, I think. Um, heparin tubes. Heparin can aggregate the platelets. So that means it makes the platelets sticky. Platelets are really, really small fragments of cells. They're very fragile. And if the platelets become sticky, they become heavier. And the chances are then when you centrifuge your sample, the platelets will spin down, you lose them. Secondly, the gel separator in a heparin tube, because these tubes are not licensed for reinjection, micro particles can actually become loose and you will reinject that into the skin. And that is not safe for your client. So heparin tubes, like I say, they are IVD, they use an anticoagulant that can make your platelets sticky and the gel separators are not safe for autologous treatments. Okay, the next one. These are the gold tops or yellow, if you like, and these are serum tubes. Serum is plasma once all the cells have been removed. So there's no fibrinogen, there's no clotting factors, and there's no cells in serum. There's no anticoagulant in a serum tube. So your plasma will clot within three to four minutes. The gel separator is there because you do separate the cells, but because you're only ending up with serum, there's no regenerative properties to serum. So that kind of defeats the object of platelet rich plasma because you need platelets. Okay, the next one, and I've seen these used, which is quite surprising. These are EDTA tubes. EDTA is the anticoagulant. These are used in hematology for full blood counts. So they check the uh, white cells, the red cells, the platelets, everything that circulates within the blood. And again, these are IVD, so please do not use the purple top ones. The fourth one is the blue. These are sodium citrate tubes. Just bear in mind, these tubes do come in different sizes, but these are sodium citrate tubes. Now, sodium citrate is the anticoagulant that's commonly used in commercial PRP kits. It's a liquid anticoagulant, so it dilutes your PRP. So for every nine parts blood, it's one part sodium citrate. I have had feedback from clients where they've said they've used sodium citrate as an anticoagulant and their clients complain that it's a little bit stingy because it's a chemical. It can alter the pH of the blood as well. But these blue top tubes are IVD and these are generally used in coagulation and like I say, the sodium citrate can make it a little bit stingy, but ultimately all these tubes use anticoagulants. Now, if you're using a commercial PRP kit, that's great. And at least you're following the regulations, but are you aware that anticoagulant inhibits the activation of platelets? So as platelets are circulating, they live for about eight to 10 days, a new platelet, a young platelet is larger than an old platelet. They actually decrease in size. But when a platelet is activated, it releases growth factors. And it's the growth factors that we actually need. Without growth factors, there is, there is no tissue regeneration. So with, that, with, with anticoagulants, because it inhibits activation, in a way your platelets are a bit useless without 
the growth factor release, which actually brings me on to platelet pore plasma as well. So if you're using a product that utilizes platelet pore plasma, that's generally less than 5% of your baseline. So for every 100 platelets, you only get five. Now, this is a numbers game. We need platelets. We also need activation, which is why we do not offer PRP. We used to, but following extensive research and development and looking at the science, we only offer IPRF. Now, there's a difference here. So basically, IPRF does not use anticoagulant, it does not use a chemical additive, and it does not use a gel separator. And the benefit of that is, think about your centrifuge. So when you put your blood sample in your centrifuge, you are separating your cells. With PRP, you spin hard. So you spin hard, separate your cells, your gel separator moves up. But what happens there is, because your platelets are so tiny and so fragile, you tend to spin your platelets out. So what, what happens is your platelets end up down here. But with IPRF, we spin slowly. We are using activated platelets. And what happens with IPRF is your platelets end up up here. Now, data actually shows that you harvest more than double the number of platelets with IPRF than you do with PRP. There's no chemical additives but please make sure that you are using a class 2B medical device tube. So no matter if you, you, you want to do IPRF or if you want to do PRP, do not use IVD tubes. If you'd like more information on IPRF, you can go to www.iprfsmartcell.com. If you'd like to get in touch with anything that I've covered on this video, you can contact us at info at cosmopro.co.uk